Call to order City of Forest Park Council meeting number 1301, October 16th, 2017. Let us stand for the pledge, please. of the role, I'm going to ask that we all take a moment uh, of silence for uh, former council member Russo O'Neill who passed away um, last week. Uh, Mr. O'Neill had served on the city council here in Forest Park from December 1993 through November 1997. So if you would please join me in a moment of silence in his honor. Thank you. The clerk, please call the roll. Burns. Collins. Here. Cottle. Here. Herbie. Here. Holt. Johnson. Here. Moore. Here. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes, I would move to excuse Council Members Burns and Holt. Yes. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we excuse council members Burns and Holt. Is there any discussion on the motion to excuse? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to excuse, let it be known by the side of voting aye. 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 Opposed? Those members are excused. Item number two is minutes. You would have received copies of the minutes in your packets. Are there any <coughs> corrections or additions to the minutes? Hearing Just a couple of typos. Do you want me to get those to sound? Just pass them to the clerk, yeah. Okay. Item number three is presentations. There would be two presentations this evening. <clears throat> the first presentation would be our business of the month award. And for the month of October, the recipient of the business of the month award would be State Farm Insurance. Uh, they've notified us that they could not be here tonight but they would uh, they will be here at the next meetings uh, they uh, obviously want the president want to have the presentation made at a council me meeting and we will accommodate them for that uh, Paul you would so notify them the second presentation is the Wooden Woods High School Environmental Act competition uh, we'll start with Mr. Wright Gwynn director all right, my name is Ray Gwynn. I am the Forest Park Environmental Manager. Uh, tonight I have the pleasure of introducing the Whitmoods High School teachers, art teachers, and some of the students who participated in the first, and I, I, I can't say that strongly enough, the first annual environmental art competition. Uh, since it's the first, we had to kind of be flexible in, in the program, but we did give three guidelines to the students. Uh, they could choose any median that they wanted to work with. They could work separately or in a group. And they had to write a short narrative describing their artwork or the reason why they chose this subject. Now throughout this project, I was very fortunate to have three great teachers who were in the school. I sat in my tower over at the city building and didn't have to really do much other than write a lot of emails. But these teachers worked with the students, and I think that you will find that they did an excellent job and the students did an excellent job. The three uh, teachers are Carol Becky Youngs. She's the high school fine arts facilitator, and she was my main contact in, until I started meeting the other art teachers. We have Karen Overmeyer, and we have Megan Smarta. Okay. Uh, the final artwork was evaluated by a panel of judges, and the judges was made up of our mayor of the uh, City Forest Park and uh, board members of the Forest Park Environmental Awareness Program. 
we went, we looked at all of them, and we kind of got together and we voted on what we thought were the three best. Who were the two with the environmental? We had Chelsea, we had Diana Chelsea. Herbie, and me. Chelsea. Mm -hmm. And who else? Diana Herbie and myself. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. And it was a great night. We saw a lot of good art over at the high school. Yeah. Um, and so we, after our discussions, we chose three, and what you'll see now are the three winners of the competition. So tonight is their night. It's not my night. Um, what I would like to say is that they did an excellent job. I was impressed. And, and believe me, I do appreciate art. I cannot do a stick, stick figure. So any kind of good art, I am very appreciative of. And y'all did an excellent job. So um, after the presentation, we'll go out, we'll hang it in the lobby, and we'll have it over the holidays. So we encourage the residents of Forest Park, if they're in the area, to come by and look at it. We're planning to do a, our second annual environmental art competition and uh, we'll see how that goes. But right now, unless you all have any questions, I'd like to introduce Carol, and then she will go ahead and introduce the teachers and uh, the, the students. When will the second art competition be? It'll be next semester. Which would be? G um, it'll start in January, and then we'll do the January. Yeah, start in January, and then we'll evaluate it towards the end of the school year. Okay, so Carol, would you like to come up? Um, fellow art teachers and Eliana, do you want to come up as well? Um, first, I'd like to thank um, Wright Gwen for giving us this opportunity to get our student artwork out there, out in the community. And having the artwork here is really cool because you actually get to see what our art students can do. And our students, our art students are really amazing. Um, this is a first for us, so we didn't know what direction things would take. Um, we had three um, very diverse kinds of responses to the um, assignment. We had one group project and then two individuals. Um, so um, I can speak to um, Eliana's, and, um, and Eliana's right here, Eliana, forward, and the grand prize winner, correct? Eliana got first place for hers. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But um, why don't we start out with a group project okay. with um, Mrs. Overmeyer, and she can talk about the group project. And I can hold that. This, uh, this group project was coordinated with the help of Rachel Reiser, who's with the Ohio Arts Council. Last year, she spent the entire year working with my students, and actually the year before as well. Um, I think they're doing something different at the OAC this year, so instead of staying with one school. I don't know exactly what she has going on for her. Again? Uh, the Ohio Arts Council, the OAC, and her name is Rachel Reiser. Um, but Rachel is a professional photographer, and that's part of what the OAC does. They put professional pho uh, artists in educational buildings, and they work with students. She said the majority of the people in the program work with elementary schools, so she was in a kind of unique position trying to find a way to work with all of the teachers schedules in our building but also to try to get to know uh, maybe like 600 art students at the same time. <laughs> uh, this project she worked with my advanced digital photography class and she taught us how to work in the darkroom for the first time which was a treat for us because we're very used to working with cameras and seeing things directly on the computer right afterwards. Uh, but we just used enlargers and photo paper to make the shadows of those hands and those natural textures. And that's actually done through a double exposure where you first expose um, a hand placed on photo paper to light. And then uh, you do that as a really quick exposure. And that's how you get all of that black in the background. But then on, after that's done, then you lay all of those natural items down. And the students collected their own natural items and arranged those the way they wanted. And then uh, did, did a second exposure, which is how you get those textures. Um, we worked together to figure out how we wanted to arrange our hands, kind of like a puzzle and a map. And then the students worked with Rachel in the dark room. <laughs> and then the last step was adding color in Photoshop. So Rachel. Uh, 
scan them all so that they were digital, and then we use these really large um, files to try to add color and keep the quality of that of that um, darkroom print. Uh, and the students, everybody's hands is on here. I really like that there's visual proof that everybody got involved and everybody laid their hands on this artwork and uh, participated. Uh, there were 10 students in the group. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of people who did more than one of their own hands and uh, there might be like a couple students that got to do three actually. But uh, it, was a, it was really fun. They all got to do something in the dark room, which they don't always get a chance to try out. Then to our um, our next um, winner. Um, this one, as the opposite of Mrs. Overmyers, this one is low tech, right? <laughs> um, just just oil pastels um, and um, Jada Atkinson's um, interpretation of the environment and pollution, and um, sort of like what will happen if we don't take care of our environment. So it kind of has that ominous feeling um, it it's almost has that also that Halloween kind of a feel to it but um, <coughs> she was really concerned with the sky when she worked on it and trying to get that to give that feeling of um, you know of what might happen if we don't <coughs> take care of our environment um, and she wrote a really nice piece about it um, which is um, up at the school um, and she couldn't be here with us tonight so that's uh, one of the other winners. Is that a teacher? Pardon? Is that a teacher as well? No, this is, is this his teacher? That wrote, no, that wrote the, the information. No, the student wrote it. Wow. Yeah, the students, the students wrote, you know, their own pieces on this. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, so that's Jada's, and you can see her cheering at the football game the next time we're home. She's a cheerleader. Is there a little Van Gogh influence? Yeah, a little Van Gogh influence in there, too. Yeah, good. We, that, we know what we're talking about, right? But here is our artist, Eliana, and she was, I believe, the grand prize winner. Um, Eliana um, is um, in ad advanced art when she did this, and this year she's an AP um, drawing, which means that she's going to get college credit. She's working on an amazing portfolio, and um, this will be part of her portfolio, but she wrote um, a really nice piece about this, so I'll let Eliana speak for herself, okay? And then take it away, Eliana. Okay. Um, I've never believed in Mother Nature, and caring for the environment has never been a top priority for me either, but when I was given this assignment, I started giving it some more thought. I was a little underwhelmed at first because I had never really taken a stand on issues like this. I thought about how I could take this topic and make it more abstract. I wanted to make my project something that would appeal to everyone. If I had done global warming or something like that, I, only about half of the people looking at my drawing would have really cared. Um, so if I had done pretty much any other topic, it, been, it wouldn't have had the potential to reach everyone. So while doing some research, I came across a few stories about Mother Nature. I realized what I could do for my project, and I drew my interpretation of what Mother Nature could look like, and I had her gazing out to the viewer intensely as if to say, this is what you need to do. Everyone has their own idea of what taking care of the environment means. I wanted to encourage each person to do that to the best of his ability. One thing I realized while doing this project was that even minor things can have a huge impact on the environment. First, first and foremost, I want to thank all of those students who participated <clears throat> along with their teachers and uh, the school district for partnering again with us in this project. I want to also thank uh, <clears throat> Wright and the Environmental Awareness Board of Directors for, as usual, going out seeking new ways to bring environmental awareness to the forefront. Uh, for a lot of people in Forest Park, unfortunately, don't recognize and realize how much and how many different things the Environmental <coughs> Awareness Board of Directors and the Environmental Awareness Program does. Uh, they do everything from A to Z, everything from, you know, right throws the kitchen sink at us. 
we've gotten to that point where we're kind of they're kind of taken for granted because they're always doing something and they're always doing something new uh, we've had a lot of projects with the school district as I said this is this is just the newest one and this one will like all the ones in the past I'm sure become a very successful program and if this first year is any indication we know we got uh, good things to look for down the road again I want to thank all of you for your participation and for what you have brought to us and we're going to enjoy having these posted out front so that uh, they can be seen and I think the narratives are going to be with them so that you can uh, read it as well again thank you thank you for being here and thank you for working and partnering with the city of Forest Park Thank you. Wright, I just wanted to thank you for everything you do. Um, Wright was the camp director at Camp Campbell Guard many, many years ago, and then he moved here and he does, um, I think all of your, 90% of your jobs is under the performs other duties of your job description, so thank you. And Ariana, where will you be going to college, if I may ask? I'm not completely sure yet. Well, good luck wherever you go. I wish you well. It's beautiful. Are you family? <coughs> Mother, thank you too. At this point, we will move to item number four communications from the public. <coughs> this is a time for citizens to comment on matters before council or to ask questions of concern to them. When recognized, please come forward to the podium, give your name and address, and then state your comments or questions. Council meetings are tape recorded for ease of transcription. Comments are limited to five minutes. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address council? Would you please come up, sign in, tell us who you are, and state your concern or question. Good evening. Um, there's no pen here, but I can do that last. My name is Tracy Bellingham. And I live at 11463 Lynn Cross Drive. Did you say Dillingham? D, with a D as in dog. I've been a resident of Forest Park for 17 years. And, and you said you live at 11463 what? Lynn Cross. OK, thank you. And I just have a few concerns. And I know when I start talking, you're going to say they're police concerns. But I have called the police. So I'm, my reason for coming here is hopefully so that somebody on council will pass the word so that we can escalate some issues. Um, my first concern is um, Kara Hill, um, the street Kara Hill that sits across the street from the soccer field. That street is an accident waiting to happen. Yes, it is. You have people that are flying up and down that street every day, I almost got hit head on because somebody was texting and looked up at the last minute. Um, I know when we go to back in our driveway, we've almost been hit four times. We've been there 45 years. And, and my concern is, is when they put that speed sign up past, uh, like Lincolnshire is at the stop sign, my street is the next one, but they always put the, the, the 35 mile, not 35, you can't go 35 on Carrot Hill, although they do. Um, whatever the mile is, or it, it's blank, and when you pass, that's when they tell how fast they're I was going. instrumental in getting that on Carrot Hill because the children cross the street, and I'm so afraid they're going to get hurt. But it's not scaring anybody anymore, and, and that's my no. concern. It's, it's, that's not even the part of the street where they're flying at. It's, it's right at Kemper all the way up to the stop sign. Right. And then sometimes there's a police officer that's down at the Waycross end, but he's sitting there trying to see who blows through the stop sign at Waycross. Right. So, you know, I, and, and Lincolnshire is also a problem because if you're going two ways on Lincolnshire and somebody's flying, yeah. it's by the grace of God you don't get hit. So those are my two concerns. Um, my other concern is if there's a soccer game, cars are all, always parked all the way to the very tip of Kemper. And, Kemper. Uh -huh. and if there is a police or fire emergency and they have to make a turn and there's a line of cars right there, they can't get through. Yeah, so I don't even know, you know, what the budget is or if there's a budget to paint that curb yellow. You know, right. sometimes when I'm coming out off of my street on Lane Cross and I'm turning left onto Kara Hill and I'm trying to do my right, left, right, or left, right, left, if the uh, couple on the corner has their cars parked, I can't look out to That's see. Right. So they need to park further up the street, but who's going to get into an argument with their neighbors? Um, my last concern is 
This past Thursday, my sister called me. I leave the house at 6 o'clock in the morning. Sometimes we talk in the morning. She said, Tracy, I saw a coyote at Lincolnshire and Waycross. Yes. Now, some people might laugh and say that they've always been there, but I've been here 17 years, and I'm used to seeing deer in deer season. My husband is a UPS driver in Springdale, and he sees them in the daytime. My concern is, is you have kids. In the Woods area. My concern is, is you have kids who are at the bus stop at 630 in the dark. And while people might say that coyotes are afraid of humans, they seem to be getting more bold. And all it takes is a little kid to be standing at that bus stop right. with nobody there. Sometimes there might be a parent in the car. Sometimes the parent might already be going to work. So, you know, I, I'm not really big for killing animals, but I know um, on 275 Springdale used to have a sharpshooter and they would shoot the coyotes. I just don't want to see any kids hurt. 275 up at Mallard Lakes, yes. where they're off of the expressway, they're all in those woods, I heard. Um, it's just crazy, because that happened Thursday. And Thursday night, I went to um, Kimba to get some money. And as soon as I got in my car and sat at the light and ready to turn back onto Northland Boulevard, there was one right across the street, just standing in the parking lot. I turn my high beams on. He looks at me, and I look at him, and I'm like, they're just everywhere. I mean, I know they need somewhere to live, too, but I just don't want to see anybody hurt. So I had to do the same thing at the other major parks, Yeah, including Wenton Woods. Yeah, I'm just, I, I don't want to see any kids at the bus stop that are hurt. And essentially, it's either going to be a kid's going to run out in the street and get a ball on Lincolnshire, or somebody's going to cross the street on Cara Hill, or somebody's going to be standing in the dark at, you know, with a coyote coming. So those are my concerns. I just wanted to um, express that, and that's all the time that I was going to give. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lonham. Uh, in regards to your two issues regarding uh, speeding and parking, uh, Mr. Hodges will make note of those and uh, have discussions with the appropriate people in our police department. As far as the uh, issue of the uh, coyotes, um, I'm, as always, I'm going to be very, very honest with you. There, there's not going to be a lot that can be done about it, obviously, uh, when it comes to what is called culling or thinning herds of, of animals. That's a function of the uh, Hamlin County Park District. Uh, that, uh, too, we will make, I won't say we'll make them aware because they're already aware mm -hmm. that. Uh, you can actually are, call the park ranger of, uh, at Winton Woods at that one and speak to them specifically. Okay. All right. Thank you all for your time. Sure. <clears throat> Anybody else from the public? Hearing nine, we'll go to item number five. Yes, ma'am. Um, my name's Chris Merritt. I live at 1576 Cara Hill Drive. I hadn't planned to speak tonight, but with her concerns, I would like to reiterate what she said and, and be a witness to seeing all of this happen. I live right at the end of where Lemon Tree goes up the hill. Chris, and you I, were the one and that I, took, wait, excuse me. Can I finish? Baby. Can I just finish yeah, my you story? Took little, yeah, just you a took minute. The you saved the baby's life. Thank you. Go, go ahead. Okay, so I live at the corner where you go up to the lemon tree and down. I can see the policeman sitting where he sits to watch the stop sign. Sometimes I am not sure if the peop if the cars are going to be able to stop. They are going so fast, and I stand there and I watch them and they somehow manage to get stopped at the stop sign or they go through it. But last year, I was out in my garage and I saw this little girl walking down the middle of the road in bare feet and a diaper and she was walking like with her hands up like she had just learned how to walk. She was that small. I'm not kidding you, she couldn't have been more than two feet tall. So I'm watching to see where there's a parent. There's no parent, no guardian, no, no cars, no, not a soul in sight. And she's down the middle of the hill going down Lemon Tree. She turns to go on Kara Hill in the middle of the road. And I yell out at her because I saw nobody. I said, hey, where are you going? And she looked up at me and I still saw nobody. So I went out to the road, I picked her up and I still didn't see anybody so I called the police if one of those cars that flies up our road had come and she, they couldn't have seen her, she would have been dead. 
the cars go that fast. So I also would like to voice my concern with Kara Hill because I called the police. They eventually found the father walking down the sidewalk. Um, evidently, he, lo he lost sight of her. He said that he um, fell asleep on the couch. She lived clear up over the top of Lemon Tree. She walked clear down the hill and then up the middle of, the, of, of Kara Hill. So that poor little girl would have been dead if one of those cars that couldn't stop had come up our road at that time. So it's just an accident waiting to, to happen. It's not a matter of, of if, it's when something's gonna happen on that street. So I agree that they are not, they're not being efficient by watching the stop sign. The, the policemen need to set in the middle of the street maybe one at each end until the people start slowing down because it's not stopping anything when they sit clear down there to see the people if they're gonna stop at the stop sign. So that's my concern as well. Thank you. And then we will, uh, Mr. Hodge will contact the appropriate police uh, people to discuss those issues and we will take care of the other one as well. Item number five, reports of standing committee. The first of these is Ways and Means Committee, Councilwoman Herbie. And uh, before you do, as usual, if, the, if, if you, you don't have to stay, if you don't want to, you can, you're welcome to stay, but if you don't want to, you can feel free to leave. Ways and Means Committee, Councilwoman Herbie. Um, yes, first of all, I want to congratulate the uh, art students, uh, first of all, for participating in the environmental art um, contest, and then also congratulate the winners. I had the privilege, as Mr. Gwynn said, of helping to, um, to judge those, and we were extraordinarily impressed by, by everything that we had seen. Second thing is, I wanted to mention that we, uh, I, I recently attended the employee volunteer dinner, and uh, one of the recipients and recognitions for Hall of Fame was the Environmental Awareness Program, and I want to congratulate them for that. The other was the Hall of Fame recognition was given to our um, former and deceased uh, fire chief, Trish Brooks, and so I want to um, acknowledge both of those. The third thing is um, leaf season is upon us, and so people are going to be concerned about disposing of their leaves. I want to caution people, Forest Park does not have curbside leaf collection. Residents have to find other ways of dealing with those leaves. If you access the Forest Park website at forestpark.org, if you go down the home page, scroll down to the bottom, on the left there is a link called Leaf Disposal Options. And what you will find out is that there are a number of options open to residents one, of course, is mulching your leaves. One is also composting, and one of the things that we have done in the Environmental Awareness Program is to discuss both of those, and we have had composting um, uh, workshops in the past. We may have others in the future, I suspect. Uh, one other is that you can take your, um, uh, your leaves to Rumkey uh, and drop them off. If you take them, they will be composted. The other option is to dispose of them with your weekly solid waste curbside collection. However, those will not be composted. Those will go into the landfill. If you are um, on the full service, you can put out up to 200 gallons of trash per week, which is the equivalent of two Rumpke 96 gallon trash containers one Rumpke 96-gallon trash ca container and five garbage bags. So, Diana, they will take the, Rumpke will take the leaves? Yes, they will, if you fall within the, the limits. The third option is six 35-gallon personal trash cans, and the fourth option is 10 garbage bags. That's if you're on full service. So you can put your leaves out in garbage bags as long as you're within those requirements, and they will pick them up. Like I said, those will go into the landfill, however. If people are on the ECHO tier program, um, your leaves can be disposed of in your container, but they have to be in your container with the um, lid closed. Or you can, for a dollar, up here at the municipal building, purchase stickers and put bags out in addition to your, uh, con your container. So they can go in the regular garbage? 
yes, they can go in the regular garbage, but they will go into the landfill and will not be composted. So if you, you put them in a garbage bag then? You can put them in a garbage bag and put them out with your trash. You have to follow the limits of the full service. Which is 10. Which is up to 10 gallons, well, 10 garbage bags. That includes also your garbage. It's not, it's not 10 bags of leaves. It's 10 bags of garbage. Right. So, you know, leaves can be in some of them, but you may have garbage in the others. That's for the, helpful that pe for people to know that it uh, goes to different houses. I mean, different could, could I finish, please? Yes. And if you have any questions, ask me at the end, because may, I may cover these things for okay, you. Okay, thank you. For the echo tier, as I said, your, your leaves have to fit in your container with the lid closed, or you can purchase yellow stickers to put on garbage bags, and then you can put out as many of you as you want as long as you have those yellow stickers on your garbage bags. Each of those stickers are, are um, a dollar a piece. Um, and finally, the, f the latest option is the City of Forest Park this year is starting a leaf drop-off program. You can bring leaves in paper bags, no plastic, to the uh, municipal building up here on November 11th and 12th only. There will be a rumpy trash dumpster out here to collect leaves. You can bring them in plastic bags, but you have to take them out of the plastic bags and dump them in the container, or you can bring them in paper bags. So there are options, and I hope that uh, that uh, you would consider any of those. The best alternative is always mulching, because if you mulch the leaves and leave them on your grass, it will help uh, decompose and help your, uh, maintain the nutrients in your soil. So thank you very much. Very helpful. Any, any question for Councilwoman Herbie? Councilwoman Herbie, for your, for the work session on the 23rd, I have three items for you on the agenda. Creation of Parkwood Tax Increment Finance District, Depository and Banking Services Agreement Updates, Surplus Property Disposal. Do you have any to add? No, sir. Next committee report is Community Development, Mr. Barnes, who is absent. Anybody has a report for him? Hearing none, there are no items on the agenda for him for the <coughs> meeting on the 23rd. Next committee report is Law Committee, Councilwoman Collins. I have no report from the Law Committee at this time. Question for Councilwoman Collins. Hearing none, Councilwoman Collins, for the meeting on the 23rd, there's one item on the agenda for you, and that's a liquor license request. Do you have any to add? Uh, yes, I would like for uh, the council to consider revisiting um, joining the Hamilton County uh, par Planning Partnership Organization. I will discuss that with Mr. Graham and the, and the city manager, and we will make some determine they because that is not a law committee item, and I will discuss that with them and see if there is any inclination on their part to do that? Chris Anderson. Okay, yeah, instead of Paul, I said Paul, Chris Anderson. So Chris and... The next uh, item, w the, the next report, Standing Committee, is uh, Human Resources Committee, Councilwoman Holt, who's also absent. Has anyone from that committee ever report for her? Uh, there's one item on the agenda for Councilwoman Hope for the next work session, and that is the Clerk of Council contract. Next committee, standing committee report is item E, Public Improvements and Facilities Committee. Councilwoman Moore. I have no report at this time from the Public Works. Any <coughs> questions for Councilwoman Moore? Councilwoman Moore, I don't have any items on the agenda for you. Do you have anything to add? No, Mayor. Next committee report is uh, <clears throat> Public Safety Committee, Councilwoman Cottle. Uh, yes, I'd like to thank Environmental Awareness Director Wright Gwynn and the Wentwoods High School Environment, our Environmental Art com Competition that, uh, that displayed tonight. As far as the fire department, there were four incidents, uh, one in the F section uh, and, the, and the structure is gone, one in the K section and the structure is gone, and then uh, Skyline Chile, uh, 
they had to, uh, the fire department had to go up, so someone uh, at Skyline Chili, a car drove into the building. And the only thing that I want to bring up in for the fire department is Halloween safety tips. If parents worry about hidden dangers in their children's candy. And I just want to point out that it's important that we watch for child safety. Uh, if the children are under 12, age 12, the parents should be with them. Teach them to walk, not run. Um, be careful with the kind of clothing they wear and the type of mask they wear so they don't fall. And remind them to stop at all street corners before crossing. Um, and I think that concludes my report, but I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Councilwoman Carl? <coughs> Hearing none, Councilwoman Carl, I have no items on the agenda for the work session for you. Do you have any to add? No, thank you. Thank you. Next report is Intergovernmental Relations and Communications. This is my committee. I have no specific report. I do have four items on the agenda for the uh, work session. The first of those would be the winter recess, followed by law director prosecutor contract, the magistrate's contract, and the public defender's contract. I will answer any questions if there are any. Hearing none, we'll move to item number six, the mayor's report. First and foremost, I want to uh, thank all of those people who had a hand in uh, the volunteer, employee volunteer dinner. Uh, as usual, it was, in my opinion, a great success. And in conjunction with that, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Smith and the <coughs> and this committee on um, Hall of Fame for mm -hmm. the work they did in making the selections and in reviewing all of those applications that came in. Sure. Also, I would like to th uh, thank the Wynwood School District for inviting us to participate in the parade. And I would like to thank those council members uh, who did participate uh, in, the, in the parade, uh, who were available and um, those staff members and departments who also uh, took their time to participate in that parade. That will conclude my report. I would answer any questions if there are any. The next item on the agenda is item number seven, the city manager's report, Mr. Hodges. Thank you, I'll report three things. First, uh, staff is in the um, process of budget reviews. We start this week and we'll prepare a budget that will be presented to council uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, second, we have completed the uh, latest issue of the Progress Newsletter and it's been distributed uh, here in the municipal building and also placed online for the public uh, review and we'll probably have one additional Progress Newsletter that will come out December for the end of the year. And finally, I would report that all the departmental reports have been completed, they've been included in the council packet. They've also been placed on file with the Clerk of Council for public inspection. So that will conclude my report, but I would respond to any questions if there are any. Any questions for the City Manager? Hearing none, thank you, sir. We move to item number eight, other reports. The first of those being uh, Law Director Mr. Wyckoff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have reviewed and approved Ordinance Number 24, 2017. Uh, regarding the solicitation at door-to-door uh, -door here in the city. Also uh, approved as to form the new investment manager contract that you will be voting on in resolution number 30, 2017. I also responded to a couple public records requests that were made uh, to the police department, and I'm currently working on a legal opinion for the police department on um, what they do with handguns that have been confiscated over the years and who, who gets them and, and how they're to be returned. Uh, other than that, I have nothing else to report. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions for the law director? Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Wycroft. Next report on the others, clerk of council, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to report that resolution numbers 26-2017 through 29-2017 were posted as required, and that concludes my report. Any questions for Clerk of Council? Hearing none, thank you, Ms. Sturkson. We'll go to item number nine, um, unfinished business and general orders. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? 
Yes, I would move to suspend the rules requiring the reading in full on two separate days and read for the second time by title only, ordinance number 23-2017. There's a second. Second. And moved and second that we suspend the rules requiring the reading in full on two separate days and read for the second time by title only, ordinance number 23-2017. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, uh, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend? Collins? Yes. Cottle? Yes. Kirby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Motion to suspend the rules passes 5-0. First item on the uh, uh, business A, ordinance number 23-2017. Would the clerk please read that ordinance by title only? Ordinance number 23-2017, authorizing the payment of public monies into the state treasury asset reserve of Ohio. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes, I would move adoption of ordinance number 23-2017. Second. Been moved and second. Who would adopt uh, ordinance 23-2017? Is there a discussion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes. This ordinance was read for the first time at our last scheduled meeting, and so it's uh, scheduled tonight for formal vote. Um, basically, approval of this ordinance allows us to make a change in our level of participation in the State Treasury Asset Reserve Investment Program, commonly called STAR Ohio. It would eliminate the $100,000 cap and allows our investment amount to be based more upon market conditions. Um, a number of years ago, when, when Star Ohio was beginning, this was a cautious uh, thing. We were only wanting to invest up to $100,000, but they have proven um, their um, uh, facility to do this, and so we are asking that um, uh, we go up to an investment of $500,000, and I would urge adoption of this um, resolution, or ordinance, excuse me. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on Ordinance 23-2017? Cotto? Yes. Kirby? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Collins? Yes. Ordinance 23-2017 passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda is item number 10, new business. Uh, <coughs> ordinance number 24-2017. Uh, this item must be read in full. It was not posted, and this would be a first reading. Would the clerk please read 24-2017, please? Ordinance number 24-2017. An ordinance amending Chapter 110, Business Regulations of the Forest Park Code of Ordinances, regarding door-to-door -door solicitation, whereas Chapter 110 of the Codified ordinance of Ordinances of the City of Forest Park includes regulations for peddlers, solicitors, and canvassers, which were established by Ordinance 13-1962 and amended by Ordinance 05-2004, and whereas since the passage of these ordinances, constitutional parameters for such laws have been further defined and clarified by court decisions, and whereas door-to-door -door solicitation is an exercise of the traditional right to the freedom of speech protected by the First Amendment of the United States Constitution, Constitution, and whereas any resident has the right to deny access to persons who wish to intrude upon his privacy without invitation to the resident's home, and whereas the council held a hearing on October 16, 2017, to gather public input regarding the city's regulation of door-to-door -door solicitors. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the City of Forest Park, Ohio, Section 1, that Chapter 110, Business Regulations of the Forest Park Code of Ordinances, is hereby amended as set forth in Exhibit A attached here to and incorporated by reference. Section 2, that Section 156.06D of the Forest Park Codified Ordinances, reading as follows, the peddler's license at the time of the filing, the city manager charged an application fee of $5 to cover the cost of investigation. The city manager shall charge for the license the fee of $25 per year or any part thereof, provided the city manager shall charge for the license a fee of $10 where the license is issued for a period of 90 days or less and where the application for the license specified that the length of time for which the right to do business is 90 days or less is hereby deleted in its entirety. Section three, 
that Section 15606F of the Forest Park Codified Ordinances is amended to read, additions are in bold, deletions are crossed out. F, insert the word commercial, solicitors, delete, and canvassers license, insert permit, the word permit fee. Delete the license fee which shall be charged by the city manager for such license shall be 20, shall be $25, delete per, insert if valid between 91 days and one year, or delete any part thereof provided however the city manager shall charge for the license a fee of $10, delete where the license is issued for a period of, insert if valid for 90 days or less, delete and where the application for the license specifies that the length of time for which the right to do business is 90 days or less. Section four, this ordinance shall, ordinance shall be enforced and take effect from and after the earliest date allowed by law. This ordinance will be on the agenda at the <coughs> next meeting of the council. Next item on the agenda is uh, a motion, Councilwoman Herbie. Yes, I would move to suspend the rules requiring the reading in full and read by title only resolutions <coughs> number 30, resolution number 30 2017. Second. It's moved and second that we suspend the rules requiring the reading in full and read by title only resolution number 30 2017. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on the motion to suspend? Herbie? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Moore? Yes. Collins? <coughs> yes. Collins? Yes. The motion to suspend passes 5 0. The next item on the agenda uh, on the new business is item B, resolution number 30 20. 17, would the clerk please read this resolution by title only. Resolution number 30-2017, a resolution authorizing and directing the city manager to negotiate services and enter into an agreement with Meter Investment Management for investment services. Is there a motion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes, I would move to adopt resolution number 30-2017. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution number 30-2017, is there any discussion, Councilwoman Herbie? Yes, we've discussed it at a, a prior work session. Staff's recommending that we add a second investment advisor as a safeguard to our funds, so basically we would not be holding all of our eggs in one basket. Um, we always strive for the highest security for any of our public funds, and so we are recommending that we add a uh, meter uh, investment group to our um, uh, group to a, to our list of investment advisors, and so I would urge adoption of this resolution. Any further discussion? Hearing none, would the clerk please call the roll on resolution 30-2017? Johnson. Yes. Moore. Yes. Collins. Yes. Cottle. Yes. Herbie. Yes. Resolution 30-2017 passes 5-0. Next item on the agenda under new business is a motion, item C, Councilwoman Herbie. Yes, I would move to receive the general fund summary report as contained in the departmental reports. Second. It's been moved and second that we receive the general fund summary report as contained in the departmental report. Is there any discussion on the motion? Yes, sir. Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, let it be known by the sign of voting aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes unanimously. I have no further business on the agenda for this meeting. Is there any other business to come before the body? Is there any other business to come before the body at this time? Any other business? Hearing none. <laughs> meeting of the church.